OK, today we're going to look at phishing emails. Now these are not interactive scams, these are typically just emails that come from an unattended or fake mailbox with the intention of getting you to open an attachment or click on a link. So I'm afraid in today's video we don't have any back and forth banter with a real human scammer. However, I've got a reason for making this video. I work in IT and scarcely a week goes by without somebody asking me, is this email legit? And usually the answer is no. So today I'm making a video to try to show you how I answer that question and maybe so that some of my customers can learn to do this for themselves. So let's take a look at the anatomy of a phishing email. So our first example is an email that purports to come from PayPal. Now these things are always riddled with typos and grammatical errors and stupid mistakes. So as we go through, I'm just going to highlight the ones I spotted. I think I probably didn't even get them all, but let's have a look and see what's wrong with this email and why you shouldn't believe it. So the subject is important. Update your information account. Exclamation mark. We've limited access to your account until we hear from you. Space. Full stop. Hello, PayPal user. Recently, we have detected different logins from your account from different country, followed by some illegals buys. We don't think that... Wait. We think the you are not who do that. So we have suspended your account. Open your account by clicking to login button and remember to update your informations after logging in. We will give you one day to update your informations or we will suspend your account forever. Sincerely, PayPal. P.S. The following button contains a special link that gives you the possibility to open your account. OK, so we've got, what, a dozen different problems here. So the first thing to realise is that PayPal is a large company that employs thousands of people and probably dozens or maybe hundreds of those people are in the communications department. PayPal would never send an email that's this badly written. I think in all of my experience of dealing with legitimate messages from Microsoft, PayPal, Amazon, I think I've maybe seen one or two genuine typos or grammatical errors in genuine emails from those companies. So why would you believe this is real and click on the login button? So the next one we've got purports to be from iTunes. And it says, thank you, song purchase orders on new devices accepted, statement review account subscription order, Jason Mraz, songs $3.19. Now, the fact that I don't have an iTunes account most likely means nobody has purchased anything on my iTunes account. Now, you might be surprised by this, but I have actually come across people who have opened an attachment or clicked on a login button in a phishing email that said there was a problem with an account they didn't even have. You'd be surprised. People do do that. Anyway, let's have a look at the rest of this email. So obviously it's clearly not from Apple. And it says, Dear customer, now I think Apple would probably know the customer's name. It says, This email confirm your subscription purchased. Subscription order songs, invoice date Friday, November the 13th, 2018. What to do next? 1. Download and review invoice we attach. 2. Open and read invoice newsletter. 3. If it is not you who do order, please follow the steps that are in the invoice. If indeed you are doing this transaction, just ignore this email. Thanks you. Regards, iTunes Apple Store. Now note there's a complete lack of any Apple branding here. Now there's no indication at all that this email is in fact from Apple. So why would you open the attachment? So we've got another one here purporting to be from PayPal. There is no subject. It's not from a PayPal email address. So the title inside the email is your PayPal account has been limited. You have to solve the problem in 24 hours. Hello, PayPal customer. We are sorry to inform you that you cannot access all of your PayPal advantages like sending money and purchasing due to account limitation. So the title of the next section, if we ignore the spurious characters, is why my account PayPal is limited. And the answer is because we think your account is in danger from stealing and unauthorized uses. What can I do to resolve the problem? You have to confirm all your account details on our secure server by click the link below and following all the steps. And then right down at the bottom of the message, there's another unexplained, completely spurious character. So again, PayPal would never send a message that's this poor quality. It's completely unbelievable. So why would you click that button? Next one says it's from Amazon. Now this one, interestingly, does conceal the email address. So you could believe this is from a legitimate Amazon email account. However, let's read on a little bit. So it says, hello, space, comma. Your Amazon account was used to buy a $250 gift card on a computer or device that had not been previously associated with that Amazon account on this date. If you did not make these purchase, or you believe an unauthorized person has accessed your account, you should capital V verify capital Y your capital I information 
as soon as possible account page at cancel capital T the order. So again, we've got an email that is completely devoid of any branding. It's just riddled with typos and grammar errors. Again, completely unbelievable email. So why would you click that button? So next up, we've got what appears to be a warning from Netflix. And it says about your account, but it's not from a Netflix email address. It has a Netflix logo that's been stretched out of proportion at the top. And it says, hello, dear. Your account has been suspended. Update the information to correct the problem. So there's nothing in here to make it look legit at all. Why would you click on that link? And so here we go again. We've got another one that says it's from PayPal, except it's from a completely unbelievable email address. It's got a bit of spurious text up the top there that says gov. No idea why. It's got a logo that isn't even using the right font for PayPal. And then it says we recorded capital P previously suspicious movements in your account. I don't know what previously suspicious movements are supposed to be. But anyway, reading on. Your account will be limited, comma, capital B, capital W, because we recorded previously suspicious movements in your account. Please update your account informations in order to continue and ensure the best service. Update account now. All this for protect your account with update now. So again, there is nothing about this email that looks legitimate and it's completely crammed full of nonsense wording. It's completely unbelievable. Why would you click on that button? So in general, what should you do if you receive an email that's telling you something is supposedly wrong with one of your online accounts and you should act on it? Well, the first thing to do is do what it says on your coffee mug. Keep calm. Don't panic. There is no such thing as a real world situation that is improved by panic. Not a single one. Read the message. Organisations such as PayPal, Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook actually put in quite a lot of effort and time an investment into writing legible, readable, presentable output. Read the text, look for errors. Does it seem legit? Recognize the hustle. Now, if somebody is trying to make you do something that you would normally do slowly and carefully in a hurry, you're being hustled. So these emails nearly always try to create a full sense of urgency and severity. So watch out for that. If something's saying you've got a very limited time to do something and it's a very serious problem, the more that they tend to stress that, the more likely they are to be false. So again, don't panic. Don't click the links. I mean, actually, in general, don't click links in emails. Just don't do it. There is almost never a good reason to click a link inside an email. We'll look at some exceptions to that in a minute. But in general, if you weren't explicitly expecting that email, don't click any of the links in it. Let's just take a look at a few real account or transaction related emails. So the first one I've got here is from Facebook. And this is something that happened in response to me using a new mobile phone. And so I signed into my Facebook account on a new mobile phone. And so how do I know this is legit? There are a number of different signs, but they all need to be taken together. So let's have a look at them. Firstly, it's addressed to me by name. It's addressed to my name personally. It mentions my location. It mentions a device that I recognize having recently set up. It mentions a time and date that I can recall setting that device up. There are no stupid mistakes in any of the text and it comes from a plausible sender. So given all of those factors taken together, I can ascertain that this is a genuine email. So if I want to, I can click on that link. But of course, I can also just log into my Facebook account directly and do it there. So the next one is from Apple. Now, I did say earlier I don't have an Apple account. That's right. This one is from my son, actually. So anyway, it says how to reset your Apple ID password. This is a genuine message. And here's how we know. It's again addressed to your name personally. It arrived in response to an explicit action that you carried out. So this was a password reset. And then this email turned up within a minute of that activity. There are no stupid mistakes in the text of the email. And it comes from a plausible sender. So again, we've got lots of reasons to believe this is real. So following the link in this password reset is the only way you can actually reset the password. But given that we were expecting this, we initiated this action and there is every other reason to believe this is genuine. We're OK to click the link on this one. And so here's one that relates to a purchase that I made on Amazon. So let's have a look at this and see if we are going to find anything in here that makes us believe this is real. So firstly, it relates to an item that I remember ordering. It mentions the place that I remember buying it from. It's got my name and address in it. There are no stupid mistakes in the text and it's from a plausible sender. So again, there's every reason to believe that this is real. This relates to a transaction that I knew I just made. So I'm perfectly OK to believe that this is a real email and click on the tracking links that I might find in there or any of the others that relate to my orders and so on. But again, I could just log into my Amazon account directly on the web 
and I could do all of those same things without clicking any of the links. So I hope that's been useful. I think if I was to sum this up in two words, it would be pay attention. There really isn't any magic or deep science to determining whether these emails are genuine or fake. It's kind of obvious. So if you just pay proper attention, you can be adequately safe. So I think we might follow this video later with another one where we explore what actually happens if you click on the links in a phishing email. Spoilers, nothing good, but we'll have a look at what actually does happen if you try to do that. That's for a future video though, so for now, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.